Live, local, breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. We start with breaking news out of Anderson County, where the coroner has been called to a home on Malden Road. Deputies are on the scene at the house right now, where we're told they saw some, quote, suspicious activity. Officers are saying this is a death investigation, adding that there is no threat to the public immediately. Now, this is still a developing situation. Please stay with us as we learn more across the night. And an arrest has been made in a murder that kicked off the weekend. Greenville police say they were called to Berkeley Point Apartments on Wynwood Road off Malden Road Friday afternoon. Once there, they found 42-year-old Antrina Smith with a gunshot wound to the head. Police say they have now arrested Najalyn Smith. They say the victim and suspect are family members. Najalyn is being charged with murder and possession of a weapon during a violent crime. In Elberton, Georgia, a teen has died after an ATV accident. The coroner says 14-year-old Colton Rousey died yesterday from his injuries. He'd been riding an ATV on Mobley Hill Road on April 29th when he crashed. He was life flighted to Prisma Health in Greenville. Investigators are still looking into the accident. Turning to our weather now, today was much drier than yesterday. Griffin Hardy joins us now. What are we looking at heading into the work week? Well, uh, it's a mixed bag of sorts. Okay. We have another chance of storms tomorrow. Oh. Then we're heating up Tuesday and Wednesday, kind of close to 90 on Wednesday. I can't believe you're saying 90. Yeah, I know. It might be the first day we actually hit 90 in Greenville uh, so far this year. So hotter temps kind of on the way, but not for the full week. We have a cold front that'll be coming through towards the end of the week. We'll talk all about that in the full forecast. For now, let's talk about what's happening now. Uh, as Stephanie mentioned, not too bad outside. Temperatures right now, 80 degrees in Greenville. The humidity has been a little higher. We're seeing dew points in the low to mid 60s. It's been a little bit more turbulent in western North Carolina. We've seen some downpours across much of the area in the mountains. Uh, you can see the rain coverage pretty scattered, uh, stretching from Cullowee over towards Rutherfordton. A little bit of light rain showing up now in Oconee County, but that's really the extent of the rain uh, altogether in the upstate. Heavier downpours, though, up towards Hendersonville, stretching over towards Brevard. You've got some low locally heavy rain here. There have been around, you know, one to two lightning strikes per downpour here, but it uh, doesn't look like it'll be too, too much to report home in the grand scheme of things, but still uh, some heavy downpours going on there. Live super downpour zooming in a little bit closer towards uh, the, the upstate. You got some more again, light rain across uh, parts of Oconee County, but that's really about it. Upper 70s, low 80s outside right now. It's going to stay kind of warm and kind of muggy for the rest of the night tonight, and we still have a chance for more occasional showers. That chance of rain's not going away overnight tonight. It's Still 40%, 10 p.m., 1 a.m., and into tomorrow morning. Again, temperatures warmish with the humidity, low to mid 60s early tomorrow morning. And same for folks in Western North Carolina, albeit with a lower chance for rain. Now, here are the headlines ahead in the forecast. Again, like we talked about, uh, we're going to heat up Tuesday and Wednesday, mid 80s, and then low 90s potentially. Some spots hitting 90, that is, on Wednesday. Uh, and then more storms are possible on Thursday before the cold front arrives Friday. Your full forecast in just a few minutes. Okay. Thank you, Griffin. We'll see you again in a few. College administrators are carefully watching weekend graduation ceremonies as students at various campuses protest the war in Gaza, creating a movement unlike any other this century. On the heels of a peaceful protest at Clemson University yesterday, Rick Damagella has a roundup from coast to coast. This weekend saw universities across America hold graduation ceremonies as well as arrests in the ongoing pro-Palestinian campus protests. In Los Angeles, police cleared out a protest encampment at USC, but did not make any arrests Sunday morning, according to the school. The university has called off its main commencement ceremony, citing what the school says are security concerns. The campus has really been on edge for the last couple days, especially with a email that was sent out by President Carol Folt last night expressing that the university was committed to holding commencement, that while it supported free speech, it also had limits. At the University of Michigan, banners with opposing messages flew overhead and some protesters were removed during the school's main graduation ceremony on Saturday. At the University of Virginia, police arrested over two dozen people after they took down tents and cleared out protesters Saturday. There has been gas that has been sprayed. We don't know if that is tear gas, but you can see that there has been gas that has been sprayed as they are moving in and there is 
fighting in between them. Former Republican Senator Ben Sass, who is now the University of Florida president, called for school officials nationwide to, quote, step up and mind their own shops. You don't get to take over the whole university. People don't get to spit at cops. You don't get to barricade yourselves in buildings. Um, you don't get to disrupt somebody else's commencement. I'm Rick Damagella reporting. Meanwhile, Jewish members at local temples did not focus on the protests today, but on Holocaust Remembrance Day. Congregation Beth Israel and Temple of Israel both came together to remember a tragic time in their community. They held a candlelight ceremony in memory of the six million people who were lost in mass murder by German Nazis before and during World War II. It is a day for us not only to just remember but to uh, be inspired to act, to take the memories forward, to learn from their stories. Organizers say it's important to always remember the events of the Holocaust, especially as fewer survivors are alive to recount and teach about the tragedy. In business news, Greenville's Midtown got another shot at growth today with the long-awaited opening of Parlor Donuts. Dozens of folks started lining up first thing this morning when the first donuts were getting topped. This is at the shop on Lawrence Road. Parlor Anchors 1901 at Midtown. The strip mall was built in the 60s and recently got a facelift, creating a new plaza that also includes Claire's Creamery. One of Parlor's owners, a native of Greenville, is proud to be part of additions to Midtown. So incredibly excited to be a part of this community, to have this open, and the reception we have received this morning is just overwhelming. We are extraordinarily blessed. I hope everyone enjoys it, loves the product. Uh, we're just blessed to be here. Parlor is franchised out of Indiana. This is the second shop to open in South Carolina. The first is at Litchfield Beach. And another Midtown business is making national headlines. USA Today has named the Flying Rabbit on Lawrence Road one of the top 20 aerial adventure parks in America. It's in the running for the top 10 in Reader's Choice Awards, up against other zip line and ropes courses from Ketchikan, Alaska to Durango, Colorado. The Gorge zip line in saluted North Carolina also made the list. Voting in the Reader Choice Awards ends on May the 27th.